Welcome back to the LCS where Umti and TL have evened up the score against FlyQuest. So what better time to do another episode of Paint My Life. This is Paint My LCK and LCS Life, Umti. Um, Umti Song Hyung's in-game name, which also means primary hill in old Korean, is the name of a maple story monster that moves more quickly than it looks and spits poison. And there's an example of it. Umti's professional debut came in January 2017 on Generic Green Wings. He was praised for his creativity, but often criticized for risky decision making and sometimes greedy pathing. Umti went from Jin Air to KT Rolster and then to Fredit Brion. While on Brion, he was team captain, earning the nickname of the general. Although Brion were not expected to do well, when they did end up pulling off an upset over then reigning world champions Damwon Kia, Umti famously said, We want to show fans what a group of kids with truly nothing to lose can do. With a career characterized by his charisma and refusal to give up, Umti now looks to lead Team Liquid into a potential LCS title. And as we go into draft, I think Umti's story is just really interesting because he's persevered through a lot of unlucky situations or like mid to bottom tier teams and he's stuck around. He's stuck with it. He never ever gives up in game. And it's really tough, I'm, I'm sure, for players who are put in positions where it's like, I'm on another losing team uh, constantly, and you always want to get that one opportunity, that one chance to show what you've got. Uh, it's easy to be demotivated, and it never feels like he is. It, it, it's hilarious hearing from Impact and talking about Umpty and how positive he is in game, mm -hmm. uh, even when the game state looks doomed, uh, that he's someone that can always lift the mood. So that's been his personality. It's nice to see that now, hey, they've tied up this series, and they're looking to take a lead here in the playoffs. Really amazing art, too. That too. I just want to throw that out Thank there you. that you draw and write all of those. Yes. And you basically are able to do them weekly. So and in this case, paint. Just a quick shout out. Fun. Thank Hell you. yeah. Also, now I know he's a Maple Story enjoyer based. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> we love that. Uh, as Got a few see. questions for him after today. Yeah. You're if gonna, he's feeling you're good. Interview him on Maple Story. Yes, I will. Ask him how it compares to his Lee Sin performance. <laughs> Just make him do an analogy out of the blue in a second language. Yep. Okay, so this draft, Smolder, Volibear, still gone. That's what we've seen for a lot of the series. Senna yes. denied by TL is a little bit interesting since it wasn't successful for a FlyQuest last game, but yeah. I think TL thinks otherwise. Don't want to give that up again. Yep, and we see the Vi come down. These have been Fly's standard. Blue side bands, as we see the Renata come down for TL, so returning to their game one red side bands. Varus surely should be the pick here for FlyQuest. I think the one problem they've been having is at least their bot lane has been um, underperforming or getting challenged. In the first game, it was the level one that put them behind. And then game two, like, Yon has been basically, Yon and Core JJ running a truck on them. So hopefully they'd want to pick up the strongest bot lane available. Um, so it looks like it's going to be the Nautilus pick. But Varus, to me, came to mind with just generally how strong he is, how flexible he is if the team comp is uh, uh, pretty tanky, then you can go to the Blade of the Rune King build, otherwise you can go poke build. And it's a good takeaway from Jan, but looks like that might be the pickup from Team Liquid side. Yeah, I just want to call out some of the performances we've seen so far in the series, though, as we're moving into game three. I'd say Jan has performed at such mm -hmm. a high level. Uh, APA has been okay. I think Jensen's actually played quite well to get a huge amount of gold but has had some key team fight like positioning errors that have made these games really interesting and yeah as we can see FlyQuest opted to deny Core JJ's Nautilus more than they did the Varus which has been such a big pick this series. Yeah and I mean those team fights in the top side of the map definitely was started by the Nautilus that really made Masu's life harder so sure being able to hit the back line is going to be difficult but if you end up locking in this Callista Rel is going to be equally as hard to take to deal with uh. um, and the Varus ulti has been pinning them in the game in game one even after that win so I still think it's going to be really hard for FlyQuest carries to deal with the front line um, so let's take a look at what they what they end up locking in for the rest of this yeah and I feel like that Callista is a little bit of comfort for Masu as well mm -hmm. I'd say even just within this spring split there's been a lot of games where he falls behind on Callista but then ends up still having a really good mid and late game. So yeah. I think FlyQuest has this as a little bit of a comfort and weirdly like an insurance pick since Masu is just so good at late game close to. 
and two mid lane picks that I really love. You go. Yeah, I was gonna say as we see the Nico locked in, this is interesting. So I were I was wondering if they were just gonna slam Ziggs mm. again, right? Um, and that was the first rotation they went with in the last game. APA was drawing a lot of attention on that pick, uh, so it's interesting to see the pivot over towards. Nico, if only because I thought Ziggs specifically as a champion was what allowed them to have a lot of side lane pressure just due to his kit and leaving him alone with a tower being so dangerous. True. But APA's strongest pick honestly has been Nico when he's outside of his usual pool, right? Mm -hmm. um, people will remember last year going into Worlds, APA's Nico is really what set them ahead. Uh, in a lot of their questionable team fights. So like, I think I think that's a great pick for him. I was looking at Jensen's Ari because that is definitely a new look for him this year. Um, and usually with Ari picks, you want to play a little bit more towards mid lane to unlock Ari and have her move. But at least if there is a timing, uh, Jensen already showed a propensity to do that in game one on his Talia pick. Mm -hmm. So still, it's worthwhile, pretty mobile, to at least work alongside Inspired and getting some of the side lanes ahead. TL with the Olaf and Jace bans, I think, are trying to set up a Renekton pick on four. We'll see if FlyQuest ends up banning that now, mm. or if Ripple is fine going up against it. It's really interesting playing against Whippo. This is something we were talking with Fudge about as he was here. He's like, yeah. it's just so annoying going up against Whippo in the 4-5 because literally anything can happen. His champion pool is so big, and it's like basically every single draft that they enter into, Whippo will be picking as late as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And a good challenge in game one was the fact that, yeah, FlyQuest chose blue side, even though usually they benefited from five pick Whippo. But it's like, they can just lock in a Renekton, and there wasn't really a good response from Team Liquid side. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't need the counter pick if he realizes that Impact is not going to make the best use of it. I, I'm very surprised here that there's that many top lane bans and then not a blind pick top laner. Yeah, I am kind of surprised too. They must really honestly be that scared of whatever Whippo would be able to pull out uh, the Sinjao coming in for TL. I think this pick has kind of been, until playoffs, a little bit underutilized mm. in the LCS in terms of seeing it elsewhere. Whippo, I feel like he's super comfortable just locking in this Renekton again. Could just be another Sejuani game. And we're back to the same situation we were in game one. Um, and you have to believe Team Liquid have a, a better takeaway. If they go for an Aatrox pick, then it may just be as simple as looking back at the uh, kind of conversation we had with uh, Fudge. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, uh, you just don't take the bad trade anymore. Uh, and you just pick the same, you just still lock in the same idea. Jarvan did get minorly buffed, and there are a mid laner and an AD carry that don't have an inherent dash. So Jarvan is an okay pick here. You can also pile in with the Nautilus Callista for CC chaining. I don't hate the Jarvan actually for Inspired. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really curious to see where Inspired will go to because it feels like he has plays in both mid and top where he wants to go. Rumble. That's the change. The Rumble locked in for a Impact. Okay, so that's what they changed. Yeah, with their with their five dropping the Aatrox and bringing in the Rumble. Because I was like, surely we're not walking into the same state <laughs> in the top lane. Uh, but it looks like we've got Rumble, uh, double AP from Team Liquid side. So I like the draft quite a bit from TL. Um, <laughs> It makes sense to me, especially if Jarvan ulti does, does come through. At least you have a way to fight within that ulti with both Nico and Rumble. Absolutely so. Big draft in game three. Casters, take it away. Muchas gracias, chat. We're getting ready for game three. And on the back end of a another stellar performance from Yawn, Inspired says, enough is enough. I have the Cataclysm ready to put him down. Yep, gonna be going for that Varus again. And we are minus one Fudge on the cast, but we're plus one Kobe. <laughs> nice, yeah. So Fudge, it's a good trade. Fudge did a half day today. Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. he's out, he's got better things to do. <laughs> he's gotta prep, gotta prep for his next matches. Uh -huh. Go yeah. home, he came in, did his research on the teams. He's like, okay. <laughs> yep. I've seen all I need to got see. Got him downloaded. <laughs> got him downloaded. Uh, I'm once again really excited for the top lane matchup though. Um, too bad uh, too bad we did lose Fudge for the day because we're going to get a uh, rumble with Ignite on top side. And you've got some volatile junglers ready to come to a volatile lane. You got to expect they are going to go hard up there in the top side. Jarvan is always fun too because you can do your level two, uh, you know, people cheese call ganks. them cheese ganks. I call them uh, intelligent ganks. Smart pathing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, probably not going to be the case this time around, but um, definitely going to track uh, the path in here. Inspired especially is not one that 
unnecessarily skips camps. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I think it'll be a bit more efficient. Yeah. Uh, the, the big contrast when we look at like Inspired Jarvan versus someone like Rivers Jarvan, who really amps up the creativity of where he wants to go on the map. Inspired wants to be efficient. And even when we had him on that pros episode where he's talking about like, uh, who do you consider the best junglers in the league? Like, do you think River's up there? And he's like, I don't know why everyone's just dying to these cheese ganks from River all the time. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me. I actually think, and it put a lot more respect on Umpty, who has some really good pathing in the early game. Yeah, it's always uh, funny to hear junglers talk about other junglers, because I feel like if if one gets off way more ganks that are successful, then you always call them cheese ganks. You're like, ah, <laughs> this guy's flipping. This guy is so risky. And he's getting rewarded. That's such an obvious gank. What are my laners doing? Yeah, Come on, uh, exactly. Yeah. I, I, I ping this guy. <laughs> Why are you dying? Uh, look at this, though, because I love this. Uh, I actually want to look at the other side. Oh. Yeah, there you go. The, the defense for all of the top laners that have started to come in and harass jungles. Uh, it has become a super prominent strategy. Uh, just took over the Korean server first, and then everybody started doing it. All of these really strong top laners come invade. Uh, if any junglers start on the top side, and then the next iteration are these counters for it to try and protect your jungler against it. So we see another uh, protection there. Both junglers starting top side, both junglers unharassed. It's a minor thing, but I actually like that Inspired didn't show on the initial trade because he realized Impact wasn't going to be far enough in to do anything. He didn't need help to actually kill the ward since uh, Renekton levels W. Yeah. But had Impact immediately then backed off, they wouldn't have actually had information that Inspired was starting topside. So yeah. I did think it was a smart thing. He ended up having to reveal himself anyway because Impact hit hang around. Um, but I like those little things where it's like, hey, you can see what the thought process was and it could have gotten them a reward for really no cost. Never give away unnecessary information. Number one rule of jungling. Yep. Both of them will, of course, start from the top side, though. And bottom lane has evolved into a banger, especially with how well Yawn has been performing. Now both sides have taken the engaged support, uh, melee supports down here. Core JJ is so good at all of these Ooh. melee, melee matchups. Inspired, uh, looking to get spicy, but Umpty's here, too. Yeah, reads it. Meanwhile, top side of the map, first blood for impact. Actually roasted Rumble with, <laughs> Rumble with the true fire. Uh, I mean, Rumble was banned against him before. Now we're seeing why. That that was a solo bolo and Bupo still had flash. Uh, I w wasn't paying attention to the very beginning of it. Yeah, but I did see the end of it. I mean, it's impact level three versus level two, so I don't know if he just got the level up. And now Bupo trading into him again. You do not want to fight an overheated Rumble, but. It's a good trade back. He's trying to clip him. Still has flash available from both top he laners. Flash. Oh, flash. Oh, 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 oh. Impact is able to get in his head and wait until the very last frame. I, I love it because he knows when I turn around to shoot this harpoon, that's gonna bait in the flash and he immediately flashed. There was no, oh, I'm harpooning and I'm waiting to see if he flashes. It's instant. APA's here though. They're gonna look for this potentially, see if uh, Whippo does go forward on the impact. You can see impact's like playing a little bit dumb. He's like, ah, oh, I gotta get this caster minion. Gonna step up, by the very least, APA will help him reset the wave. It's no TP on impact, so you do need help pushing out these waves, absolutely. But Inspired is here as well, ah. and they can actually look to fight this. Good ward from APA is going to show Inspired on top of that bush. And now there's a TP top as well Holy from Jensen. Moly. There's three top. They're trying to hard hold this freeze. Bupo is telling them if he can't reset, he's Jensen. screwed. Yeah, flash committed from Inspired because they know that impact doesn't have his own flash. It's a kill for Jensen. Oh, there are so many good mind games here. And then how Team Liquid uh, chase here because they didn't see Jensen immediately. Now it's going to be a follow up as well. A um, little clone in the brush there, but that was that was so nicely done. Yeah, this was really, really smart. You know, fully committing to actually stopping him from crashing the wave. Now, of course, Impact will just go mid as APA holds stop. And we're going to have this kind of weird situation where the players do briefly lane swap. And then very likely as they push it out, they will come back. Um, but this is the earlier play. Is it a level up to three and then just the initial all in? No, he just steps up and Wippo was just already really low. That's just yeah. a freebie. Wippo wow. just gave it to him. That was not a good death from Wippo whatsoever. And that was before the Ignite came out. So I wonder if there was like an earlier trade. The Ignite had got the health advantage yeah. and then just came in for the finish. Yeah, that definitely looks like it. They lane swapped as well. So both Renekton and Rumble go mid afterwards. Uh, an umpty ping ponging back up to this side means he can do Gromp and they should have control of the grubs because of uh, the recall there. Jensen goes for first item Merc Treads playing against the Nico, scared about that lockdown. And that's the first time that Team Liquid has had control of the Void Grubs in this series for the first rotation. 
Uh-oh. Good flash. Flash is expended by pretty much everyone in this bot set. That was really fast from Yon, though. If he got passive rooted there, he probably would have been dead, and Whippo may just be dead here. Yeah, no flash on this crocodile, and he's getting turned into a belt. Umpty picks up the kill. Wow, this this topside control for Team Liquid. Umpty, after finishing up on that Gromp, rotates over, and they catch the no flash Renekton. The variability here of the lane swap and pushing back, they don't keep it in mind. Look at Inspired, though. He's going to be able to see this, so uh, Jan should be able to back it off. No, the recall finishes, so he's going to be okay. But Inspired was looking to see if he could find something there, but they're going to lose three grubs and a kill on top side for just the summoners that they force. So if they can't get a return play onto Jan and really slam that home, then they end up falling pretty far behind off that play. And they don't have enough time to burn down the first dragon of the game either, so they are kind of losing the objective for right now. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is the first time the team- This could be a dive as well, potentially. Yeah. Okay, no, he's not gonna stay around. Okay. Well, as we said before, this is the first time the Team Liquid have had control of the top side of the map for Void Grubs the first time this series. And even the last time they fought against each other in week six, FlyQuest were able to get that first rotation. The story has always been that the solo lanes for FlyQuest are dominating both APA and Impact respectively. But with all the shenanigans that happened in the first few minutes of the game, it now goes over to Team Liquid's control. Yeah, I mean, it hasn't really been the case. I think the Talia game from Jensen definitely dominated in game number one, but Impact solo killed Bupu in game number two, solo killed him in game number three already. So it definitely has not been that, that level of consistency and dominance that we were expecting, I think. And it's interesting, too, seeing uh, APA go back to the Nico. Uh, this was one of the early crutch champions that people identified for him. Mm -hmm. um, but then, of course, they focused so much on their Rail and Soul and the Ziggs. Uh, th this Nico was originally one of their best champions that they drafted because of all the playmaking he was able to get done. And because he was able to coordinate with Kyoshik at the time was yeah. the jungler, but the, the plays that they were able to coordinate were the things that got Team Liquid uh, you know, into the top half of the standings. Look how much time, though, Inspired has been sending here. He's already been sitting here for 30 or 45 seconds behind them, trying to look for that play. Every time they were going for those pink wards, he was hoping that it was going to be Yon that would step up. But Yon has been playing so far back that they haven't been able to find the angle. And Inspired doesn't have flash, so he has to walk close enough. And this could be Whippo potentially in trouble because Equalizer is available, Ignite is available. If he goes a little bit too far forward, an MT could get him. Still no flash for Whippo either, but he backs off after he pushes out a majority of the wave. It's not going to be able to contest. Inspired is still in bot lane. This is crazy. That's over a minute of just standing there, not farming a camp, not getting anything done. It, it's horrible for him. It's horrible for FlyQuest. So much time wasted. Meanwhile, Umpty does come check, uh, but he goes right back to his jungle here. And then finally, now we're seeing Inspired go back to his Krugs. But the opposite side, jungle camping here, has been so beneficial for Team Liquid. Uh, and to the detriment of FlyQuest. Honestly, it is because Yon has had such a big impact on this series, yeah. you have to feel like. And since the Varus had no flash, that was a prime target. But props to Team Liquid for their bottom lane, mm -hmm. not going for the big engages, not leaving any openings here to get punished. Yeah, just playing so smart around those missing summoners. Now the ghost is back. The flash will be back shortly. So that window is pretty much gone and they weren't able to punish him whatsoever. And in the meantime, Umti had gotten five camps ahead. Mm -hmm. Plus was able to get grubs. I out. gotta say, the more I watch this series, the more I'm like, man, Vulcan called it. And Vulcan has been kind of spot on. This uh, this TL bottom lane is looking good. I always love it when the bottom lane gets kills in 2v2s, but also when they play curse safe. Him? Yes. <laughs> I mean, poor JJ still has flash, but he Sorry. gets turned up. Kobe, how could you? Oh my God. Team Liquid fans are out in force for Kobe as Jan is also going to get caught out as well. Damned if you talk about them, damned if you don't. And the ball is going to be outside your balls. house with a pitchfork. <clears throat> no, no comment. Uh, Kobe, but, I'm uh, telling you right that now, was instant. That was a double curse, too. You didn't even curse one guy. Kobe, do not check your DMs after this game. Yeah, well. Definitely uh, not getting paid by Steve. I, 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 I will check my PayPal just to make sure the Papa Smithy uh, <laughs> donation came through. Whoa. Now, flash from Umti, it's answered back by Masu, but he gets the knockup with a three talent strike, and Impact should be able to burn him down with the flame right. spitter. And it's a trade. But that is also like pretty costly. Impact coming down, he has no teleport, right? Mm -hmm. It's the flash ignite rumble. So he's Two coming down to the top. bottom side to make sure that they get the dragon. It does mean Blippo kind of gets back into the game on Renekton and gets some turret plates for himself. That being said, Impact also gets turret plates on bottom side, and they should be able to secure the dragon as well. Yeah, we'll see exactly what the, the fallout is. Yana, at the very least, didn't use his flash, neither the core, so they kind of just accepted that they were going to go down, mm. and they will have those uh, summoners available. 
Uh, but APA, you know, able to get that one played on bot side, but it is two already gone. They've lost. No one has been getting even the experience from top side. So that's, I want to say two and a half, if not three waves of full experience and gold lost on top side. So yeah, they got some stuff back on bot side, but still, this is really good for Whippo. Uh, and Impact did kind of hurt his game a little bit by going down there, I think. And next question is going to be the Void Grub spawn number two, because if you give a full six over to Team Liquid, it gets really scary. And Whippo just got a lot of, uh, you know, catch up experience and gold for himself. Inspired's on that side as well. But support Rome comes out first for Team Liquid. So Core JJ's got the early vision and it looks like they are gonna... Oh, the flash, it's just a solo oh. kill, the ignite. He follows him afterwards and Inspired was there ready, but he just wasn't in range to help. Impact is crushing Whippo back-to-back -back games. Three solo kills on him across two games. Doesn't even need the equalizer. Whippo stayed around so long, he just got all that gold, hadn't even got back to base. Oh, look at this, though. They're going to get some payment. Yeah, Impact doesn't have flash, but Core JJ is here. The Cataclysm locks him down. Core JJ tries to answer back. No way, he lives! Team Liquid comes to the rescue and is able to trade one back on Inspired before Impact finally goes down to Whippo as, uh-oh, this is not good for Yawn. Was caught out by the 2v1. Busi Amasu lock up a Yawn. This series is so fun. Uh, it, it has been so scrambled with all of the rotations over, everybody heading up to the top side, and Yawn comes through. His flash is now down again on the Varus, mm -hmm. so they are for sure going to repeat, uh, look for ganks there, and the action just continues. Yeah, and after that, six grubs, all the TL uh -huh. now, so M MT cleans up the grubs off the back of that, but definitely not the start that Yawn would have wanted. It, it's so fun because they're going for multiple plays at the same time mm -hmm. when you're like oh team liquid did the early rotation they had first support roam so they're just going to take the void grubs no they're going to solo kill while they take the void grubs <laughs> and oh. while they have two people mid and now bottom equalizer lands on amasu they know that he still doesn't have flash from the bottom lane skirmish Corje is charging up but whippo was already here and prevents them from getting on top of masu inspire commits his own eq over the wall and i don't <laughs> think he has flash i mean he gave his life to make sure his ad carry got out i guess the ants go marching in one by one. A new challenger approaches, and in the end, Team Liquid do get the chase down on Inspired. And now Impact, yeah, Impact woke up all right. Now he's gonna be able to push on top, on uh, bottom side here, and he's got Core JJ hovering as well. So whippo has got to worry about dives. He's got to worry about six mm -hmm. grubs here going to allow Impact to get even more turret plates. APA is getting turret plates on top side. Impact doesn't actually get up to the turret on bottom side. He goes for the recall, so he doesn't uh, milk the six <laughs> Void Grubs for some turret plate money down there. Uh, but they're just collecting all over. Yep, and Yon, you know, he had been moving down, cheating down towards bot side to see if he could get involved in the fight, but wasn't able to, so went back towards mid. No one was there, so that he got a plate mid. They actually denied a wave there as well. So uh, TL, you know, definitely coming out good from that play, but it is a dead even game here, pretty much 100 gold in lead for TL. And we're going for another invade here. FlyQuest C1. Poor JJ gets caught out first. Umti tries to rally around him for support. Yon over the wall. China, whoa, Inspired flashes over the chain of corruptions with the Cataclysm. <laughs> But is he stuck now? He's already committed the flash. He's dead. He's gone. Oh. Team Liquid now chasing the rest of Team FlyQuest out of the jungle. Yon flashes the Pepega Frog. He's like, I got a blast cone <laughs> right here, buddy. Nice fancy moves. Blast cone trumps all. I mean, it, it looks cool flashing over the chain of corruption, throwing the ult down, but he didn't have any spells available. You're not going to solo this guy, and no one was in a position to follow up. So at the end of the day, uses oh. well, uses flash, dies for it, and gets nothing. And now TL looking for Whippo. Action continues on a Whippo. No flash available. Pops the Dominus, the Equalizer. It's a great choke point. It forces them down towards the lane, but they get run down by Team Liquid. Another two kills to their side. It's also funny. This is the quietest all chat that we've had this whole series. The only thing that was typed was impact at the beginning said good luck have fun i feel like the coaches gave him a talking to after <laughs> or, that last one i mean they yeah they probably just muted all their chats yep. and made it for <laughs> q only because because that was it except for impact you know yeah. he has manners so that like impact you can still type everybody else no <laughs> i do want to say there's been a lot of action in this game, mostly on both solo lanes, but the mid laners have been relatively quiet apart from a couple of interferences. And Jensen and APA, we know that the regular season was really rough for AP on his side, whereas Jensen's probably had one of his best splits in recent memory. But APA has been doing better. He's been solid in this series so far. Even last week, he's probably had some of his best performances. There's mm -hmm. still 
some moments where he's flubbing, but nowhere near as much as during the regular season. Yeah, and Kobe touched on it earlier, but you know, this pick here on the Nico was one of his big picks when he first came to the team, and it was one of his big picks in playoffs in particular, where it wasn't about the lane for him, it was about the picks, it was about the team fights, and they're gonna look for Jensen. Oh, he popped the Spirit Rush, but it was interrupted by the Magnus Storm, forced to flash away. All right, that's gonna be Tower for sure, uh, for Team Liquid. They could probably go two objectives at once, impact get bottom. It looks like they're going to rotate their bottom lane up to mid. Wow, it's an early rotation from FlyQuest up to top side. Try and push API off and at least answer objectives and get a turret for themselves as well. API respects it. That's going to give this tower over to FlyQuest side. I mean, Inspired has been super proactive trying to make these plays work, but it has come a cost to his own income. Umpty yeah. on the other side has been pathing efficiently. He's already at the first item spike for himself. So this is a stronger Zin Zhao versus the charge in combat power right now. Oh, okay. I thought he was going to steal that for sure. Umpty was trying to steal it, but they're bulling them all away from the, the Herald item itself. Cataclysm right on top of Umpty and Core JJ. Umpty is trying to flash away towards the right side where the rest of Team Liquid is waiting. Here oh! comes the APA Nico special. This is what he made a name for himself last summer in the LCS when he debuted. Umpty goes down as they trade one back onto Pwipo as Impact gets caught up by the charm a little too far, but he has the stasis and the rest of the reinforcements come through. Core JJ with the cavalry. Oh, baby. Maybe Team Liquid are cooking FlyQuest. Oh, and Impact lives in the end afterwards too. Able to use uh, his invulnerability there on the chase. They're so aggressive. Umpty, he goes in and he's able to bait the whole team in. He, he knows he has the security of his Zin ultimate and the rest of his team, if you look at the minimap, are on the way. So FlyQuest start to retreat and Umpty doesn't want to let them get out. So even when the teleport comes in and Core JJ follows with him, then he goes for his ult, he charges and flashes away so he's not to take damage and here's the turn apa comes right back in he had his proto belt and got the big knock up yeah, and it seemed like they lost track of apa in that fight he walks in obviously yana already revealed himself with the hill of arrows so they should know which one's the real varus mm. but finds that angle to be able to go for the proto belt flash ulti connects on multiple members then impact he wants more because he had the early Seekers buy. Not common to see it bought up this early, but went for the early Seekers. Oh, he's he's able to make it happen. <laughs> oh. The live view of him typing. <laughs> he said, wow, the ego. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Man. I feel like both teams have a lot of ego in this game. Oh yeah. Definitely a lot. Jensen charging forward, looking for Yawn. Lands the charge. Nice. Yawn is cooked. Shutdown goes over to Jensen. And now the rest of Team Liquid have to play defensively. Magnus Storm trades back, but he still goes down as Core J falls to Jensen. Inspired almost goes out in the equalizer. His impact. He's got nowhere else to run. Shutdown goes over to Masu and FlyQuest are back in it. Oh, that was really clean from Jensen. That Ari just walked all over this fight. Charging forward, jumping past so he could get the charm onto Yawn. Cleaning them up. That, that made it look way, way too easy. I mean, there is just so much pressure that's going to be on Yon in this game. We saw how the Nautilus ults alone were really able to pressure him and keep him out of a lot of fights in the last one, even with a really big lead. This time, it's Nautilus, it's Jarvan, it's Renekton, it's Ari, it's everyone piling in on this low mobility AD. And he stepped up here. It's just a great hook there from Busio. Got a little bit aggressive, and then we see Jensen going forward, holding the charm to the perfect moment, connects on it, Inspire is able to follow it up, and they get the 500 gold shutdown there right on the Jensen. And, and you can see, you know, the malignant stuff on the ground. He had, he had two item power spike here on Ari. That's really big in mid game. That plus the horizon mm -hmm. focus, so much damage. And he's able to run through with the rest of the team, picking them all up. And that was just after we had a big play on the opposite side. Yeah. This, this series continues to deliver. Teams uh, with some pretty big comebacks here. Yeah, it's been the story in every single game so far where you think one team has the edge and the other team swings right back with an uppercut. And, and it's really key with the two carries on double item power spikes here for FlyQuest. You're like, wow, that is, that is overwhelming. Despite the gold being almost dead even when you have just single item and components uh, across the board for both APA and Yan. That's why you have a lot of priority there. They're going to push up mid. Busio. I mean, Yawn is a sitting duck there. No flash available. Easy Cataclysm, but the counter engage from Core JJ is massive. Yawn, does he survive the Ignite? It's getting close. He falls, but the rest of the fight continues on as APA lands a Pop Blossom. Gets caught out by the rest of FlyQuest. Whipple slices him down. Umpty and Impact holding their ground. It's a three on two. In advantage for FlyQuest. The charm connects. No further damage will follow as <laughs> they land the trench line into the flat stun from Blippo. Impact is taken off the rip and Umpty is trying to 
survive, trying to answer one up back. Oh, he finds Fusio's he oh. a little too far, but it was for the greater good of FlyQuest. Man, how many charms did Jensen hit in that fight? It just felt like charm after charm after charm. He went crazy in that one for FlyQuest as Jan narrowly survived. And you started to think maybe TL could actually, you know, win this fight, but he dies the last tick of the Ignite, does fall down, and at the end of the day, not enough damage to carry him through the fight. <laughs> oh my goodness. Such a fun one. Boosty, I also have to say on the Nautilus, really big. You know, it was his Ignite there. Uh, he put it on nice and late on the Varus, and then in the end, getting another hook. Now they're right back out on the reset, though. And Core JJ has already got position. Now he wants to be the one to get a big engage for his team, but everybody is kind of straggling while coming out from base, so it gets a little dangerous. And this is a, a really strong Masu again. You know, we have to think back to game number one. 11 kills on the Glista, back-to-back -back quadra kills. This is a rookie player in his first ever playoff series really stepping up here, performing at a very high level. And with this Glista, again, there is a big threat onto the Baron. So you have to keep eyes on it from the TL side. And you can see the vision is starting to go more and more over towards FlyQuest. You look towards that top side of the map, it's all pink wards from FlyQuest, four of them up in that Baron area. No one's answering the top wave either from TL as they're really starting to feel the pressure. Yeah, and we also see how efficient it is for the top side of FlyQuest with triple Merc Treads, mm -hmm. since it's double AP carries for Team Liquid and they have a bunch of CC on their team. Uh, it was no brainer for the full top side of Team Liquid, all investing in those, definitely paying off. Whippo here with his uh, extra vision, trying to get a little bit out of the Raptors, but has to has to run off. And this is one of the costs of playing, you know, this Ignite on the Rumble at this point of the game. You don't have that second TP. APA's TP is on cooldown, so no one is really comfortable to go out to the sides until we see FlyQuest moving around. Whereas on the other side, Jensen has a TP available, so he heads down towards bot lane early. He's going to push that out, and they're going to try to utilize this extra global that they do have to run TL around the map. Because if you can ever, as Jensen, make impact respond to you, then you can look for a play on the other side yep. of the map with the TP. Yeah, because then you guarantee the 5v4 on the mm -hmm. objective. So for Team Liquid, it's going to come down to how well their macro game is when they are permanently down an additional teleport spell. Yeah, and I think they'll just want to continue to always hard force on the dragons because their team is all about five on five. It's all about this AOE wombo combo. They they have to have big plays from Core JJ and APA or else they're going to lose. And they have two dragons right now. That is their way to win the game still, even though you're down a couple thousand gold here and Jensen is looking really scary on this Ari, you have to stick with the game plan. You have to get some vision first so that Core JJ and APA have good chances uh -oh. to get big engages off. He talked about it. Masu being on the Kalista can now threaten this Baron there they on the no other idea. side of the map. It's theirs. Yeah. It's so smart because they know. TL is like, ah, we have to dragon. Uh, if we stop dragon stacking, we're going to lose. So FlyQuest, just give it to them and go for Baron instead. Something is up though for Team Liquid. They know that it, there's a potential that they are burning down Baron while they get the dragon. Unfortunately for them, it's just a little too late. Clean take of the Baron by FlyQuest. Smart. No chance for an after fight contest either. Yeah, this is just really well done by FlyQuest. They're running them around the map. They're making them answer these side lanes. They know that they're gonna go to the dragon, as you said, Kobe. And as they go to the dragon, they're already up there two manning the Baron. And then once they realize, okay, it's too late for TL to respond, Jensen TPs up. They commit all their damage to bursting it down before TL can get there and potentially take a fight afterwards. Plus, it plays right into that split push win con you guys were talking about now. With Baron buff, it makes it so mm. much easier really, really quickly push out those side lanes. And you gotta say for TL, if you're a team that's all in on dragons, trying to go for that soul, this is the worst one to get. Chemtech is really not that good compared to a lot of the other souls. So uh, definitely gonna be unhappy about the luck uh, that they have in this one. Things starting to tense up here. No dragon for another four minutes. The Baron buff is still on FlyQuest side. Whippo is pushing on the bottom side of the map at the moment. And Inspire is just going to make sure that he can do it safely as they start to push this vision line deeper into the blue buff quadrant. Yeah, I think 4-1 uh, is definitely the way to go. No unnecessary risk sending anybody topside. Whippo's the only one with a teleport here for FlyQuest. It is unleashed. Uh, he can pretty safely push up uh, as long as he doesn't get too close there. So they're going to be able to take over the jungle. You see two possible wards here uh, for later teleport plays placed by FlyQuest in the blue quadrant of Team Liquid's jungle. Remember, the only like real big drawback to giving over that dragon so you can get Baron is there's a little bit of a scary factor about Dragon Soul later on. As you said, it's just a chem uh, tech drake though, and you're gonna have vision control, plus you should have 
uh, item advantage as well right when that fight comes around still chilling on the side of team liquid as they are just trying to wait out the baron buff from the side of FlyQuest. i think this is smart optimization here from busio a uh, little bit less typical for a tank support to go towards Mikhail's. But you have to think about when you're in control like this, how do you lose the game? You lose off picks, you lose off a of Nico root, you lose off of a Chains of Corruption. Being able to have that Mikhail's plus the locket, keep your carries alive here. If you can keep Masu safe, here is your cleanse plus Mikhail's now on top. It's going to be so hard to kill that guy. Keep Jensen at zero deaths as well. I like yeah. that scoreline. That's that, that's looking too good. Yeah, I mean, he has the biggest shutdown right now, and I imagine that he is the one that is trying to play the most safe with his advantage he definitely deals out a lot of damage and he has the most opportunities for strong picks and following up with inspired and busio but that he is also painting himself a big target for team liquid biggest thing here now in comms too is everyone just talking through how are we going to lead up to this dragon fight and what are we going to uh execute on fly quest you got to have point people taking visual confirmation where is apa where is core jj your lose condition is an AoE Wombo. So as long as you don't group up and give them like a really good brush to engage on you out of, uh, that's out of vision, then you should have a pretty good time stopping that dragon stacking. Uh, also, you don't want to, you know, throw anything to the uh, the random randomness of smite fights. And sure. uh, even if you have rend, we have seen many people smite steal through the rend combo. While we have some downtime here, I want to talk about Jensen's playoff experience here because in that second game, definitely seems like APA was getting in his head, but he's bounced back. Really solid scoreline for himself. As we see, APA is going to get dove under tower here. Two man from Whippo and Busio. The pop blossom doesn't do that much damage, but the tower aggro might. But Busio walks out of range, and the dive is executed cleanly. Now, even with APA juking out with the clone, actually made Whippo use his spells on that clone. They're still able to get the kill there. And you have to also look over at the carry's itemization, right? You want to be playing for this soul right now, but it's three items for Jensen. It's three items for Masu. It's three items for Whippo. And only impact on the TL side has actually hit that benchmark. Plus now you have APA without ulti. I'm not sure if it's going to be up in time. It'll be close uh, on that soul spawn. But TL are going to have a really tough time, I think, fighting for this. I think that was also just a really smart call from FlyQuest because TL, everybody else was reset for for the entire team and so APA is the only one there and, and they feel Jensen. confident to go for There's it. There's no one to answer him because APA is dead. Impact can't be up there because he has no TP. So FlyQuest are kind of just running them around the map. You know, they've weathered the storm here early on. Impact is also falling very far behind as far as experience, as far as farm because he has to group with the team since yep. he has no TP. Yep. Even with nine kills, he's not actually that strong compared to what Bwipo is now. Yeah, FlyQuest have stopped taking the flips in terms of getting Team Liquid a potential advantage back in this game and just playing the map with the guaranteed teleport advantage that they always have. APA is waiting for a flank. Teleport comes in early from Jensen, trying to cut them off on the right side. And that's going to force APA's teleport as well. Turns into a minion, sees if he can scout, finds Jensen towards the bottom side of the map, and the dragon has been started up. Okay, so they saw APA try and wrap around. They just burned this down. I mean, Inspired is nowhere near in range. 2,000 HP. He tries to EQ in. What? Buster stole it! I don't know how he stole it. The Pop Blossom comes in. They're going to try to land it on Busio, but the Fates Call keeps Busio alive. Impact finds Busio in the back, but Jensen is trying to look for an angle to try and hit them back. Yon Flash oh. the finds Masu in the back. Team Liquid grouping around Yon. He can still carry them through this fight, but Bwipo, Inspired, and Jensen still stand. I don't know how Masu stole that dragon as Inspire presses the charge, looking for Umti. He's gonna charge away. I need to see a replay. I think it was a Q. I think he just threw the Q in. It's right gotta as be. It was going down. It must have been. And is able to take it away. That is enormous. Being able to steal this away. Oh, has he has. Look autos. at all those spears. He has a lot of spears in it too. Oh yeah, he does a lot. Of spears. He has a lot of spears in so it. It was just a rend. Let's see how low it actually gets. Down to 2k. When does the smite get used? Oh, oh no. 140 oh, left. Smite. Ah, oh, that's rough. I mean, whenever there's that many spears in it, it puts, a, it puts a lot yeah. of pressure on you. Hard. So, so then you're trying to go early because you don't know. Uh, you you want to be able to beat it still, but yeah, that's that, rough. It's hugely uh, huge cost right there. Damn. I mean, that is potentially series defining, right? It's one of those things where it's like, hey, if they got sold, do they win this game? Does that change the uh, total outcome? Because now you're 6k down. You may not have a better chance than that to actually get the soul, right? Because the gold lead is getting worse. Now FlyQuest have more time to play the map, to be able to 
build these incremental advantages that they've yeah. been doing such a good job of, of getting. Comboing with Smite is hard. We've, we've, we've seen so many failed Smite combos, whether it's with Rend or now against the Rend yeah. uh, in oh the LCS God. games here. And now FlyQuest gonna run it back on Baron. Really nice chunk from Jensen on the core JJ. 50% of his HP is gone. Charm lands once again on the Umti. It forces his ulti out. And Jensen is smurfing. This yeah. is actually crazy. He is just hitting every charm this game. It feels like it's point click. He's level 17. Whoa. Wait, the Blast Cone just punts Whippo right back into APA. He's forced to use the pop up server. He doesn't even go off. Jensen! assassinates him. It's a five on four against Team Liquid. It's fire can go for the guarantee to Cataclysm on the off, but he's firing. Can Whippo put him down at the ground? Yes, he does. FlyQuest, take this fight with such clean execution. Team Liquid are gone. Man, this is some of the best games I can remember from Jensen in his career. Like, he is just so dominant in this series. Talia game one, Ari game three, deathless on it, hitting every single charm, playing the side lane perfectly, crushing TL. After a second game defiant victory from Team Liquid, it is Jensen that Corrals the team with a bounce back score, 6 0 and 15 on the Ari, being able to show that the playoff experience is coming through. Wait, Busio died to the Nexus Tower, but FlyQuest should be able to still finish off the game. FlyQuest move to match point. What a fun series. Unfortunately, there's no typing after. I was looking the whole time. I was like, let me look at the all chat. Is he going to say anything? Is he going to say anything? Nope. Looks like uh, Jensen has left the all chat game. Yeah. And yeah. he's going to let his play speak for itself. And it did. It spoke volumes about the class of this player. Absolutely incredible performance on the Ari. Uh, definitely the best game of Ari from anyone in the LCS this year. Easily, I think. This guy was just so on point, really playing well. And the game did not start well. This yeah. was a bad early game for Inspired, a really bad early game for Bwipo. Uh, but they were able to make things happen. And largely, it was off of some really good playmaking from Jensen Zari. Yeah, and a just huge step up moment, especially when two of the other veterans on that FlyQuest squad, you're kind of looking at being the ones that will keep the game together and everyone's composure intact while everything else is going awry for the squad. But it is Jensen that steps up huge, 6-0 and 10 to end the game on the Ari. But we're going to head on over to the LCS Lounge to break that one down. <laughs> Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. This series has been opened up by FlyQuest. <laughs> it's wide open. <laughs> yep, yeah, it absolutely is. And listen, I'd say all three of these games probably could have gone either way. Yeah. Yeah, no, probably. I think each one of them, each team had like open opportunities as we go back to game one. Obviously, FlyQuest had locked in this bot lane, hoping that this would not happen. Uh, and then after the level one, Core and Yawn have been consistently performing well through all of these, but this was kind of the kickoff to it. Yeah, and I'm hearing some comms, but just in general, like it has been a race in game one about who's going to feed the most, or at least who's going to like try and carry the game. You even heard it in the chat. The fact that the chat has died down kind of showcases mm. the focus that both teams are having at the moment. So, yes, from uh, FlyQuest side, I actually quite wow. enjoy how Jensen's been playing this one out. That's a great arrow. I actually didn't catch that in real time. Yeah, this was one where Jan was getting pretty fed this game because it was the situation where the Renekton was ahead, as you said. Yeah. Jan was ahead of the Callista. But then once this fight happened, Masu was able to clean up at the end, get a quadra kill. He, he gets, this is one of two quadra kills he ended up having this game. True. And FlyQuest jumps out to the 1 -0, the 1-0 start. And like, th if they would have thrown this game, we're having a whole different conversation. Like, yeah, I, I think that actually changes the whole complexity of the way game two plays out. Because there was a Baron throw in there. Mm -hmm. There was another actual 2v2 bot side that did end up happening that just kept expanding the lead that Jan had. Um, but I think w Whippo and Jensen are really doing quite well to save this game. So especially, especially Jensen. I think this series has been really good for Jensen. Yeah. As we see, uh, 11, two and eight, wow. 900 damage per minute in just game one. I feel like he's yeah. had similar stat lines in all three of his games. Yeah, very similar. So it, it is interesting. Like this, we knew that mid lane was going to be a point that we had to watch. That we, that's what we were talking about coming into the series. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Jensen off his ear, not allowed to have Oriana. Has shown that his champion pool is quite big. That was really tilting. I think it was like one yeah. HP that he had. Yeah, as we go back to, I think the big thing in this game for me 
was how topside was kind of a mirror until Impact is able to get a solo kill, and also how APA I had a global eyes. taunt in this game, <laughs> right? Like, yep. FlyQuest wanted to kill him so badly, and I believe in the next play that we're about to see, okay, it's not, at some point sent all five people down, which actually yeah. allowed TL to completely collapse on them. Yeah, and then this is one where you saw Inspired missed his ultimate on impact. They yep. narrowly missed the kill. He positioned himself against the wall, so he gets pulled back. And this is where you think TL may actually close the series, but it was actually such a back and forth game where, where FlyQuest ends up like almost pulling it back. Yeah. Yeah, the, the fact that this game has been so hectic, and yes, it's pretty heartbreaking for Jan that they ended up yeah, so this one. clinching this one. Take a look at this APA one. APA gets hooked. Yep. Uh, Udir runs through all the potential CC with uh, Empowered E to get further onto Jan, and they actually just like annihilate both carries. I'm just trying to think, like, is this kind of how we expected this series to go? Nah, no. not for me. Not from a results no. perspective, yes, because all of us voted 3-1 for yeah. FlyQuest. But yeah. from an actual gameplay perspective, we didn't expect TL to have 13 kills and 13 assists and 400 damage per minute on one player in game two. Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing for me is their bot has been performing. Yeah. And then they were able to recover from their top lane deficits. In fact, in both games, even with yeah. losing game <laughs> one. Uh, this was not a top lane deficit. This was impact completely roasting people mm. on Rumble. But yeah, to answer that question, I agree with you. Uh, hearing Vulcan just yesterday yep. speaking up Jan and uh, Core JJ and how they basically run away with leads, that was happening in this series. And, and Masu, I think, was in the opposite end of it. And I think he ended up performing really well in this game to at least have, um, at least in the early laning phase, they really empowered their bot side. Hell, Jarvan camped a tent bot lane for True. a long period of time to ensure that they can get a lead down there. And so it did feel like at least uh, FlyQuest were playing worse as the series was going on. And to tell you what I expected, yeah. mm -hmm. I expected FlyQuest, when they get leads, to shut them down. Yeah, like, right. Shut, to close their leads a little more cleanly. Uh, but no, it has been a back and forth in all their games. Yeah, when I think of like peak FlyQuest this year, including I think the first game they played against TL specifically mm. is the one I'm thinking of, yeah. they can just be so stifling with their pressure and with their leads. And these games have been incredibly back and forth where with both teams kind of over-focusing or making mistakes within fights to allow the opposing team to get in. Yeah, this was the game-winning Giga yeah. Blast Cone by Blippo to one-shot APA before the fight starts, then they can just push mid off of this minion wave. When Blast Cones were introduced, that's the dream scenario you think of. <laughs> yeah. Of like literally winning a game off that pick. Jensen is the one that requires less tension, still performs, level up, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're about right. <laughs> inspired over Jensen. I mean, that's a Masu slander, I'd say. I'd say Masu has actually been pretty effective this, this series. I, just overall, Jensen, I think, has been the top performer this series. Yep. Inspired had some pretty off games. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd say his Viego and his Jarvan have been a little bit Helter Skelter. I'd say yeah. that's the biggest. That's the biggest surprise to me in this series is how Inspired's level isn't that strong. But on the flip side, like when he was asked about Umpty, he said he thinks Umpty is one of the best junglers in the league. So the level of respect is there, and I think Umpty's done a lot of good stuff in this series. So it's as we see here, TL selecting blue side. How do you think they bounce back in Game Four to try and make this our first five-game series of the playoffs? As a, as a weird aside, like I think TL choosing blue side is really interesting to me. Also right? strange. Because <laughs> we, even when they lost, they stuck with red side draft, yeah. presumably, once again, to get FlyQuest out of their comfort zone for saving R5 for Bwipo. So now they're going to blue side. So we're going to see a completely different draft. I think so. I think Nautilus seems to be a really strong support right now. There's not really been a response to it. And now FlyQuest are first picking it. Team mm -hmm. Liquid had first picked it even before today. Yeah. So I expect that to be picked. If Jan will get his hands on it, he wants to go towards Averis. So that's where I see the drafts going. Yeah, incredibly bloody series heading to game four. So we'll see if TL can force silver scrapes, but find out if they can after the break. I'm going around the mark. I'm marking Nico on the call. Yeah, yeah, mark the Nico. I'm, I'm jumping on Nico right now. I'm going to crap. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Look turn, look she can't play. She can't play. Look, she's dead. Okay, she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. She's dead. Wait, 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 wait. Keep going. Go forward. Yeah, yeah. Careful the rumble ult. I ult the Varus. She can't get out. Yeah, kill them all. Kill them all. Kill them all. Kill them all. Varus no flash in the ult. We end mid. We end mid. We end mid. Yeah, we end mid. End mid. Kill everyone. Kill everyone. Zinza as well. 
Make sure he dies. Yeah, nice. No, no, no. Oh, hit, guys. Hit, hit the Nexus. Hit the Nexus. Hit the Nexus. Hitting Nexus. Nexus. Nice. Holy. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, no, no. We are LPL. Nice, nice, nice.